Can we start? Uh, yeah, I don't think everyone has joined yet.
Can both teams confirm whether all participants are present? Uh, proposition is present. Position is present. Good evening, everyone. We will now be commencing the debate. Our judges for today will be Dian Madhuve, who is an entrepreneur and corporate trainer. Imesha Gajavira, who is an entrepreneur and researcher and Hiruni Lianage, who is a career counselor. The motion for today's debate will be, this house believes that the death penalty should be banned. This will be proposed by the team of St. Thomas's Preparatory School and opposed by the team of St. Peter's College. We request all debaters to stick to the allocated time of eight minutes. All participants must have their video turned on at all times. You may now start the debate. We request the first speaker of the proposition to begin. Can I be heard? Yes, we can hear you. Can I be heard? Yes, we can hear you. Can I be heard? Yes, we can hear you.
we request the first speaker of the proposition to begin. Starting in three, two, one. Good evening, panel. Panel, what is death penalty? Death penalty is a government-sanctioned form of a form of criminal punishment where a person is put to death by state. Crimes that are punishable by death by the death penalty are called capital crimes or capital offenses, and often include crimes such as grand larceny, murder, treason, war crimes, crimes against uh, humanity, and genocide. Moving on to my first argument, uh, uh, panel, we have three arguments for the house today. The first argument is how, how, uh, how death penalty is morally unjust. And the second argument is, is death penalty efficient? And the third argument, uh, the third argument, my second speaker will be taking. The first two arguments I'll be taking. Moving on to my first argument, how death penalty is morally unjust. Panel, before I move on to my argument, I would like to say how uh, uh, how death penalty, uh, how uh, execution is done. Execution can be done in few ways. Uh, uh, some of them are lethal injection, electrocution, gas chamber, firing squad, and hanging. Moving on to my argument. Uh, how death penalty is morally unjust. I have two points under that. The first point is how uh, uh, death penalty is inhumane. Panel, the International Human, International Human Rights Treaty uh, and uh, Treaty, the Convention Against Torture and Other Cruel, Inhuman or Degrading Treatment or Punishment, is intended to prevent actions considered inhumane. While the Convention doesn't take a clear stance on the death penalty, many believe executions fall under the uh, fall under, sorry, uh, execution. Uh, while the convention doesn't make doesn't take a clear stay, uh, stance on the death penalty, many believe executions fall under the type of punishment described in the document. In the United States, research shows that three percent of the executions between 1890 and 2010 were botched. What does what does it mean by botched? An execution. It causes severe suffering to the prisoner. Lethal injection has the highest rate of error, despite being the most humane and most common option. When injections go wrong, it can take a long time for, uh, for a prisoner to die. Exams after death uh, show serious chemical burns and other injuries. Opponents of death penalty say this, uh, say this demonstrates cruel and inhumane punishment. Panel. Moving on to my, uh, moving on to my second uh, point. It can't be undone. Panel. What makes the death penalty distinct from, from life in prison is that the judgment can't be reserved, reversed. It's a final punishment. However, what if new evidence is discovered and it turns out the prisoner was innocent? In the US, uh, the rate of error is extremely high. Since 1973, the time uh, that death penalty was uh, banned, 159 people have been released from death row. New technologies like DNA testing have played a big role. Uh, have played a big role in this. If timing, uh, if timing and uh, timing and circumstances had been different, prisoners prisoners would have died for crime they didn't commit. How many other death row uh, inmates are at risk for unjust execution, even if they aren't all innocent? A deeper dive into their cases could reveal discrimination, inadequate representation, and other issues that would prove they didn't receive a fair trial. In society, where the legal system can't be, really, uh, can't be relied on for justice, the death penalty is too serious a punishment. Before I move on to my second argument, I'll take, it, take any PUIs if they are. Okay. Uh, moving on to my second argument. Is death penalty efficient? Panel, my first point under that is uh, it doesn't deter crime. Panel, the fact that it doesn't prevent crime may be the most significant reason why death penalty is wrong. Many people might believe that while the death penalty isn't ideal, it's worth it, it's worth it if it dissuades potential criminals. However, polls show people, uh, polls show people don't think capital punishment does that. The facts support that view. 
the, the American South has the highest murder rate in the country and oversees 81 uh, oversees 81 percent of the nation's executions. In states without the death penalty, the murder rate is much lower. There are other factors at play, but the fact remains that no studies show the capital punishment is deterrent. If the death penalty is not only inhumane, discriminatory, and uh, uh, arbitrary, but it is often it often claims innocent lives and it do, and doesn't even prevent crime then why should it still exist it's di uh, it's disappearing from legal systems around the world so it's time for all nations like united states to end it moving on to my second point it's more costly panel the death penalty the death penalty is far more expensive than uh, the death penalty is far more expensive than uh, uh, utilizing life without parole sentence as an alternative Or, uh, as an alternative punishment. Some of the reasons for the high cost of death penalty are the longer trials and appeals required when a person's life is on the line. The need for money, lawyers and experts on both sides of the case and the relative rarity of executions is needed. On that point, I would like to end my speech and urge the panel to side with side proposition. Thank you. We request the first speaker of the opposition to begin. Am I visible and audible? Yes. Begin my speech in three, two, one. Good afternoon, honorable adjudicators and members of the House. We, as the opposition, will be opposing the motion that this House believes that death penalties should be banned. Now, first of all, before we begin this motion, we would like to uh, bring into the context of this debate by stating that we would uh, uh, consider the, the constitution and the country, uh, which is Sri Lanka, into, uh, into play when we are speaking about the death penalty and specifically considering the, uh, the state of uh, Sri Lanka and its judicial system on how we implement the death penalty. So therefore, with that, I will move on to my arguments. We as the opposition have brought forth three main arguments and our rebuttals would be incorporated into our arguments. Our first argument is the role and duty of the state. Our second argument is effectiveness. Our third argument is the true meaning of justice, which would be handled by my uh, deputy, uh, deputy leader of opposition, while my rebuttals and uh, uh, clash points would be handled by my whip speaker. Now, moving on to the first argument. We would be analyzing this under three levels of uh, analysis. Our first level being the state has a sovereign power. We need to identify the fact that this is a state and a state, a state has the obligation and the power to, uh, that has been vested upon them to protect and serve the, their citizens. And that is the major cause of a state. And the sovereignty of a state defines the ability of a state to control a certain geographical location. And by stripping the state of its ability to uh, conduct the death penalty is stripping its, uh, it from its right to uh, its sovereignty. Now, the uh, government came up here and spoke to us about the capital punishments. Now, in Sri Lanka, the capital offenses would be murder and drug trafficking which are major problems and major issues that should be dealt with some severity. We need to identify that in any system, there's a form of hierarchy, right? If you take the, uh, if you take the judicial system, there's something like a Supreme Court. There's some supreme uh, uh, judgment. And likewise, in something like a, a punishment, there should be some supreme punishment. There should be some absolute punishment, which is the death penalty. Now, we need to differentiate something, uh, the punishment given for something like a thief and something like a murderer. We need to identify the difference between these two uh, individuals. Uh, I'll be accept accepting PIs later. Just give me a moment. I'll uh, finish my point. So uh, if you consider the fact that uh, the differentiation between the, these two points are crucial. Now, the impact on drugs and uh, murder in the society is a major scope that is widened uh, to a massive length. For example, if you take drugs, what are the effects of drugs in society? It increases the rate of uh, uh, it increases rates of suicide. It increases violence. It promotes violence, which leads to murder, and it also creates depression and stress among people. So, therefore. These kind of issues should be handled with some severity, and that is with the death penalty. And the government failed to uh, 
propose a different, an alternative system so that we can tackle this problem. Are you suggesting that you're going to uh, put more individuals into prison? Where is the, uh, now you brought up the uh, argument about the economical, uh, the disadvantage, but what, how are you going to uh, provide the sufficient economical, uh, how are you going to uh, build the economical burden of putting people into prison, for feeding them, for giving them clothes, for providing proper sanitary fa uh, facilities? Where is the basis on the uh, argument of economy? No, we do not see that in the side uh, government. Now, moving on to a second level of analysis, why was the state given this power in the first place. The state was given this power because this, uh, because the people trusted in the state and believed that the state can enforce the law. The state is responsible for uh, for maintaining uh, the law and enforcing the law. And if the state is unable to do that, that is uh, a lack of sovereignty on the part of the state, and that will be detrimental for the uh, future. If the, now, if you take that can impact certain cultures, certain individuals. For example, the death of uh, Martin Luther King. That affected the uh, black community in a negative way and if, and according to circumstances certain things can come certain rights can appear certain uh, uh, battles of violence can appear against the governments and that can lose the sovereignty of the state and which results in detrimental situations where uh, states fall and uh, it turns into entire havoc and therefore we need to deal with this with some severity with the government do not see uh, appropriate now moving on to third level of analysis the uh, government brought the argument of uh, human rights I think throughout this debate, that's the only thing that we uh, agree upon. Yes, people have human rights. And we believe they, uh, that it is true that individuals have human rights. And according to the Human Rights Act, it clearly states that, I quote, every human being has the inherent right to life. This right shall be protected by law. No one shall be arbitrarily deprived of his life. Everyone has the right to life, liberty, and security of the person and the right not to be deprived thereof, except in accordance with the principles of fundamental justice. Now, in this point, there are two points that we need to understand. One is arbitrarily deprived. That means on a wimp or on a guess, if you kill someone, that is a violation of human rights. But here, there's another point that we need to come into accordance that says, except in the accordance with the principles of fundamental justice. We need to identify that we are proposing a system of a judicial system where there is a legal process where a person can uh, come with a lawyer and speak for themselves to speak for their rights and therefore there is no uh, human rights violation whatsoever that's occurring in the, in our proposed system therefore if you are convicted uh, a convicted felon through the judicial system that means you are convicted for absolute uh, crime so moving on there are also other rights that we want to protect. There's the rights of the victim, there's the rights of the uh, individual's family, and there's the right of the citizens because we are a government, we need to protect these individuals. Therefore, we see that the, uh, uh, the uh, government's proposed system is insufficient and they did not provide us a, uh, with a uh, suitable framework to base this argument on. Now, moving on to our second argument, effectiveness. We need to identify the uh, basis and the meaning of actually provide, uh, inflicting something like a punishment. What is the major, reason for this. Uh, why are we uh, in, uh, pro doing a punishment? If you take corporal punishment in schools, what is the reason why we uh, give corporal punishment? It is to inflict some form of fear, right? So that others will follow at accordingly. Now, do not come here and state to me that uh, fear is a negative emotion. Fear should not be implemented. In fact, fear was the reason that we survived during situations such as the Ice Age. We were able to survive and the, the extinction of the dodo and the survival of the human is due to the, uh, the emotion of fear because fear is a positive emotion that makes uh, causes us to drive and do what's right. And therefore, we would like to utilize that uh, emotion so that we can best protect the citizens of a certain country. Moving on to a second level of analysis, uh, Innocent, now the opposition did bring about the innocent people being executed and, uh, and such uh, uh, opinions. So for that, we would like to reply by stating that even they, they, they themselves stated about uh, certain Americans have been from 1973, uh, that 179 people have been released. In fact, that was 1973. Understand that forensic technology has improved uh, massively. And they also brought up the fact about DNA uh, fingerprinting and things as such. Therefore, forensic evidence is major. Now, Nowadays, you can uh, you can determine from the way the blood has splattered to the from the uh, from where the angle of the bullet was. So therefore, the, these things have improved, and they have been able to analyze and better uh, help the individuals in, in a judicial system. Therefore, we clearly see that there is uh, there is a major uh, there is a beneficial uh, part in this uh, system, and that 
there is no issue regarding uh, the death penalty and therefore honorable adjudicators and members of the house we uh, We request the second speaker of the proposition to begin. Can I be seen and heard? Yes. Hi, uh, can I be seen and heard? Yes, you can hear you. Okay, great. Uh, good evening, panel. Before I move on with my arguments, I would first like to present some rebuttals for the House. So, uh, the panel, the opposition's first speaker said that. <coughs> I'm sorry. The opposition's first speaker said that stripping the state from the ability to use death penalty with uh, it will be stripping the state of its sovereignty. But panel, don't you think that that's giving the state too much of power? Panel, when you give the state the ability to uh, the, the ultimate power to choose between life and death, will not that be the ultimate crime? Will giving the state that ability not be the biggest problem that we have? Panel. The opposition first speaker also said that we gave no solution, but we did panel. In our first speaker sent, uh, in our first speaker's argument, he brought up a life sentence. So, pan, our solution to the our solution to banning the death penalty will you be to sir? implement life sentence panel. Through the implementation of life sentences, people who unjustly punish, people who unjustly corrected, all of that can be solved panel because. Then, if it is later revealed that that person isn't uh, isn't uh, involved in a crime or that person hasn't uh, partaken in a crime, then you can revoke the sentence panel. And uh, we we find life sentence a better way to resolve the situation panel. Uh, we were going to ask the uh, opposition a POI, but they did not reply. Uh, so I will ask it uh, as a form of my rebuttals. So, do you think that the death penalty is the only way or the best way to deter crime? Because panel as a proposition, we do not. We feel like life sentence gives an opportunity for us to correct people. We can put them into rehabilitation, corrections panel. We can, we, it is killing people. Panel, uh, the death sentence is revenge. It is not a solution panel. It is more of a t an eye for an eye concept that people used to uh, use those days. And we feel like now in this day and age, as human has evolved, we need to more move to more revolutionized processes rather than these earlier, older systems of eye for an eye and uh, uh, taking someone's life when they commit a crime. The opposition first speaker also spoke about the economic effects on it, but the death penalty, uh, but the death penalty can be used as a tool for control and not a tool for justice. And more, most cases when the death penalty is sought do not end up in uh, with the death penalty being imposed. And once a death sentence is imposed, it's most likely that the outcome of the case, the conviction or death sentence will be overturned in the courts. So most defendants who are sentenced to death essentially end up spending life in prison, but at highly inflated cost. So because the death penalty was involved in the process and panel, the documentation, the money that is put into the death penalty might be, might be more than that of, uh, might be more than that of life sentence. And we value human life more than the economic cost panel. The proposition stance on this is valuing human life more than others. They also said that all humans have a right to life except in accordance of justice. But, uh, but then again, how do we know that the justice is correctly implemented? Human error is something that continuously exists and has always existed. So therefore, uh, like I mentioned before, what if there are racial biases? What if there are ethnic biases? What if, the, uh, what if it was just a basic human error uh, where the judge has uh, given the wrong sentence? Uh, moving on to my argument panel. Uh, so this argument is about the cultural stigma. Well, religious and religions and cultures promote compassion, not revenge. Like I mentioned before in my rebuttal panel, it's not uh, it's not worth to take an eye for an eye. And when there are better methods, why don't we use those? Uh, because I mean, it's better for a reason, right? It's more effective. And we feel like as a proposition that we should use the better methods and not the worst methods or the methods that are lagging. And after, as a society promoting these religions, these cultures and promoting compassion, killing people, there will be an act of hypocrisy and contradiction uh, in our own society panel. We'd be, uh, we'd be hypocrites. Also, people will be numb to all of this violence. 
to all of these death it will become it will become a useful thing like a day to day matter because right now apparently people don't like the death penalty people don't promote the death penalty the death uh, like when when someone is killed apparently it's a serious issue of that particular country or society but if the death penalty is passed on if this uh, if the uh, motion isn't passed on and the death penalty is used panel then uh, deaths will be a normal thing and people will be numb to violence also we lose more than we gain through this if you were to put someone into those rehabilitation facilities like i mentioned before you could train them you could make them to uh, cook in the prisons to sweep to mop you can even take them to use it as a government maybe with like army or soldiers around to build buildings we can take we can use their manpower for better things but so we lose more than we gain by uh, not banning the death penalty ban and even in their best even in their best case panel if crime does deter to a certain extent it's still not more than the crime that would deter if you put people into a lifelong sentence or rehabilitation because well you can put a person into death sentence he can escape and then after that he can go and commit the whole crime again it's simply pointless you also yeah, panel we feel that when you put them into this uh, process of rehabilitation they will not commit these crimes again when you put their efforts uh, into something else they will not commit this crime well also the cultural stigma that surrounds it like i mentioned before it's it's not worth it the effectiveness is left the less the cultural stigma is higher it's just not worth having uh, having the death penalty and like i mentioned before panel human error it is not reversible when you commit a flaw a, a death sentence cannot be revoked so human life panel we feel like merits that chinese chance that the person may be right so we aim to protect every minority and therefore we believe that the death penalty should be banned panel Racy, uh, uh, before I move on, uh, will the this opposite have any POIs? Yes, we do. Uh, now you stated that uh, individuals can escape from the death penalty and commit the crime again, but in your proposed system, can't uh, uh, convicts escape from lifetime prison and can commit the exact same uh, mistakes again as well? Yeah. To answer your question, yes. Uh, I'm not saying that they can't escape, but like I, uh, like I said, they can escape. They can. There's a very slight chance of them escaping. I mean, uh, how how uh, common do you find people escaping from jails and going and committing crime again? It's a one out of hundred and a very low chance. And we feel that if you put people into rehabilitation, why would they escape? If you put them into rehabilitation, if they make them better, then they can go out on parole. And they will find no reason to uh, take part in such crimes. Whereas if you were to kill them, okay, they have this sense that they are going to die. Panel. They have this sense that they won't be able to live anymore. So they have more motive to get out of prison. Rather here, they know that they'll be here lifelong, and then they have chance of parole depending on how they behave and the actions. Panel. Taking, uh, 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 taking, uh, jumping out of a prison or getting out of prison isn't as easy as uh, it seems to be. Uh, also, panel, like we mentioned before, this it's uh, there can be many problems like racism, uh, racism, segregation, and uh, justice when the uh, death penalty is taken into concern. It is non-reversible, panel. We, as a proposition, would like to stress that the death penalty is non-reversible, and therefore we feel like the death penalty should not be passed on. Um, also, panel, like I mentioned before, it takes a big toll on cultural identities because why stick to those old methods, and why be locked down on those old methods? Why don't we carry on and take part in better met uh, methods? And like, it's impossible to kill someone, panel, without degrading their dignity. So, like I mentioned before, panel, we would like, uh, we feel that the human lives merit uh, all the other all the other effects and therefore panel as a proposition we feel like the death penalty should be banned thank you we request the second speaker of the opposition to begin Uh, yes, we can hear you. So starting in three, two, one. Good evening, Honorable Adjudicator and members of the government and members of the opposition. We as the opposition are, are proudly opposing the topic. This house believe that death penalty should be banned. So now let me move on to my, my third argument of our side. The true meaning of justice. So what is the meaning of justice? Justice is to uphold the law and preserve the equality of the people. So when you ban this death penalty, 
this justice would be flawed and in turn the country's community would also be flawed so i'm going to break this argument into three parts the first one being the perspective of the victim and his family the second one being the perspective of other prisoners and the third one being the perspective of taxpayers in the sense of taxpayers i mean every normal average citizen so in the perspective of the victim and victim and family let me give you an example there's a murderer who has killed 34 to 40 people and he is uh, he is uh, he has been killing people for a long time from the perspective of a family member of the victim how would that feel if he was enjoying a luxurious life in prison uh, in the thought of him being rehabilitated that would not make any sense at all because he has a has doesn't have any choice he right i'll take the pr when i say so he has no chance of being re- re- rehabilitated because he is a criminal he is not the lesser type of criminals the uh, criminals who uh, who do emotional crimes and crimes like those he is a top level criminal so there is no chance of him being rehabilitated and then in the in the perspective of other prisoners as i said the prisoners who commit lesser type of crimes such as uh, uh, stealing food and things like those if you put a, uh, a drug overlord or a serial killer into the, into their midst it would not only be effective in changing their view on the justice system but it would also corrupt them and therefore corrupt the entire community those people deserve to be deserve to be rehabilitated the people who do lesser crimes and uh, lesser and emotional crimes deserve to be rehabilitated but people who do top level crimes don't have the chance of rehabilitating and it's very 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 slick and of course the uh, opposition fails to understand the fact that we are living in this highway era it's not like we are just going to kill someone just because they did something we are going to go through severe evidence testing dna testing forensic testing and all those who be implemented then only we will come to a point even though we said that over and over again we are not understanding the fact that the the death penalty criminal would be perfectly examined and tested now i come to my third uh, analysis the perspective of taxpayers that's the perspective of all average uh, average uh, average citizens from if i was talking from my point of view if you see a criminal or a drug overlord let's say a drug overlord who has, who has a big vast uh, circle of uh, drug dealing and stuff if he but he if he was outside the prison he would be living a luxurious life controlling his company and getting income and everything so what would be the difference if you put him to rehabilitation he would still be living a luxurious life still uh, controlling his vast empire through unknown uh, unknown uh, research and it would still be mean that society is corrupted so death penalty is the only way to deal with them effectively and to and to implement here uh, as the first speaker said is a positive emotion that could take us towards evolving so that's why death sentences are very 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 important for example the pablo escape in that also this structure was uh, established and this is very very effective so that's why death sentences should not be bad we are not giving death sentences to each and every person who just goes down who just does any crime we are only giving it to a certain people who are very very evil and uh, have been do, uh, known to do bad things and have bad effect on the society so why are you stopping us from uh, cleaning and corrupting the justice system and the society now let me move on to my rebuttals of the uh, government first rebuttal is uh, he talked about life sentences and uh, rehabilitation he clearly said that, that uh, the he also talked about human rights the first week of the opposition clearly said that human rights only apply to people who give the rights to other people they are killing people and not giving them them the opportunity to live and depriving them of their lives so why should we not correct them and implement a better society why i stopping that my next rebut list value of human life they have been depriving others of their rights of life and their human rights how can you how can you how can you make how can you make them 
rehabilitated and things. Uh, and I like to take that POI now. Since there's no POI, uh, one hi. more. Hello. Uh, yeah, continue, please. Yeah, I would like to ask a POI on the uh, on base of the sure. proposition. May I? Yeah, sure. Continue. Yeah. Uh, okay. So you said that people live a luxurious life in prison. So uh, don't you think that prison is more of a way of like where you can rehabilitate people and uh, change people? So like we mentioned, like when you get rehabilitated, isn't it a change? Like isn't it essentially changes in psychology rather than lu luxurious life? Sir, uh, do you understand the difference between a prison and a rehabilitation uh, 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 community? Uh, in the Sri Lankan reality, rehabilitation is more different than the prison. Prison is something that's very different from rehabilitation. In the prison, you endure hard uh, hardships, but still you can have a chance of escaping and doing it again, doing the crime again. But in the rehabilitation uh, so, uh, environment, it's not the same as the prison. You have a chance of changing, but only the people who do lesser crimes have a chance of changing. People who do large and heavy crime don't have a chance of changing. So I'll continue. Uh, the, the, uh, the second speaker of the government said that they have no chance of doing the crime again if they were, they were uh, put into prison or into a rehabilitation. And he's uh, stating that if we uh, take them to a death sentence, they have a chance of escaping. Death sentence only lasts for a short time. But the rehabilitation or the prison sentence, which is a lifetime sentence, it lasts for a long time and they have a major chance of escaping. Please, sir, look at the bigger picture and understand that instead of death sentence, if you put them into prison, they have a larger chance of escaping and going out and into the society and committing their crimes and doing those bad things again and again. So I would like to conclude my speech by saying death penalty should be implemented in the society correct and to make the society and the justice system flawless. Thank you and I would like to conclude my speech now. We request the third speaker of the proposition to begin. Can I be heard? Yes, we can hear you. Okay. I'll be starting in three, two, one. Judges, a few rebuttals for the house. Panel, the first uh, op first speaker said that it is sovereign and they can protect and use that power, right? But panel, is that the only way to go away from things? Like, is death penalty the only way? Panel, they said that the impact of drugs and murder are high. Yes, it is. But again, panel, is death penalty the only way? Panel, we gave her a solution. I will be getting to that later. Open said that we did not give a solution as we did panel. My first speaker clearly stated that our solution was life sentence, right? And panel, the op opposition one said that all humans have the right to life. Panel, don't you see that they are completely contradicting their argument solely based on saying that panel because death penalty takes away the right to human life, right? They also said that, uh, they, also said that they will go through severe testing which panel is costly and also 1,500 lives in the US, which they have caused death penalty a few years later showed that uh, were innocent and that can't be undone. Panel. I will get to that later on as well. Panel, all of what they said, we have proven wrong. I will prove it. I will prove it more. Panel. Going on to my arguments. I'm going on to the arguments my fellow speakers said. First argument, how death penalty is morally unjust. Panel. He went on to saying that it is inhumane and it can't be undone, right, panel? It is inhumane. Yes, panel. It is completely inhibiting the fact that it is a human right. It can't be undone, panel. Just like the opposition second speaker said that, you know, they'll thoroughly go through all this testing and all, panel. But then again, 1,500 people yet died, right? Which, and that can't be undone. Like, you can't bring back a life, panel. That's not, that's not a thing. Panel, the second argument which my uh, first speaker brought up is the death penalty efficient. Panel, does it deter crime? It doesn't, panel. I will move on to that later in my argument as well. And more costly, I will move, I will go on to that later on in my argument as well. My third speaker spoke about the cultural stigma and how religions show that, you know, it, it not, it's not how we show revenge. 
but per se, uh, learning from mistake and growing. Well, going on to my class points, two class points. Does it did a crime? And is it effective? Panel, going on to my first class point. Does it did a crime? Panel, the death penalty deters violent crime and makes society safer. Side opposition would say, right? Panel, but evidence from around the world has shown, panel, that the death penalty has no no deterrent effect on crime and far from making society safer panel the death penalty shows to have a brutalizing effect on society panel what is this brutalizing effect this the brutalizing effect refers to a hypothesized or put cause and um, effect relationship be between execution and an increase in the homicide rate. This hypothesis proposes this relationship occurs because execution diminishes the public's respect for life. Panel, such an effect does the complete opposite of deterring crime or even having a deterrent effect. Panel research shows that it doesn't deter crime at all. This is solely based on the first speaker's argument and second speaker argument. It does not deter crime. Panel, their whole argument falls. When you, when you show that point panel. Going on to the costly argument panel. Death penalty case costs were counted through to execution has costed $1.26 million, whereas the non-death penalty cause came up to $740,000 panel. Whereas the, no thank you, whereas the death penalty is more costly. Yes, I'll take a POI before I move on. Yes, now you speak of uh, uh, costly, right? You're saying that the death penalty is costly, but what are you going to propose when the population increases in prisons and you have to provide sanitary fa facilities and all of these things and the situation that happened in Mahara prison was a good example for such situations and uh, mistrust within the prison. So how are you going to solve these kind of problems? Okay, uh, population increasing doesn't mean that everyone will go to prison, right? That I don't know what you meant by when population increasing, the population in prison won't increase just because the population will be increased. And again, the death penalty is $1.26 million, whereas the non-death penalty is $740,000. There is a marginal gap between that. There is a huge gap, and I don't see the point of that PUI panel. Panel, our solution, life sentence. Panel, they will pay for their consequences, but being taken away a part of their freedom for what they have committed, right? The second speaker said evil, right? They will be taken away from their as part of their freedom. They would be put under su supervision inside bars, probably for life, or or the supervision inside bars for life. And even if put on a parole panel, ultimately anyone who is convicted of life will forever be in license and will be returned to prison if seen as a threat. So they will be thoroughly under they will be thoroughly under supervision, right? They will be thoroughly supervised. Panel. The solution shows to have much more effect than the death penalty panel for many reasons. My fellow debaters show that, and it doesn't deter crime at the end. Panel, the opposition has given us quite valid points, but the negatives of the death penalty outweighing the positives of having it is far, far greater. But panel, the death penalty is inefficient. It is costly. It is outdated panel. Panel, it has failed. It because it is made with the incentive to deter crime. But panel, has it done that? Research shows that death penalty has failed to lower crime rates. That is the sole purpose of it being established, right? To deter crime rates. It hasn't done that at all. It has failed. It has not deterred our lower crime rates in very vast majorities in the world panel. Panel, we see that the death penalty is not a success and has clearly failed. Yes, right? Whereas our solution, no, thank you. Whereas our solution, life sentence is much more greater. It has more, it is more efficient. And they said that, you know, they'll get out of jail or, you know, they run out. The chance of that is very low, my friend. At the end of the day, panel, it has a more brutalizing effect on society. It violates the constitutional guarantee of equal protection. It shows no value or remorse to the most important fundamental human right, the right to life. It is degrading, inhuman, discriminatory, and most of all, panel, it has shown to fail what it was, what it was established for, to deter crime. Panel, all cases given to us by the side opposition, we have addressed and effectively proven wrong, panel. But in the spirit of debating, I will go into our world and their world for a second. Panel, our model. They, if they commit these crimes, they will have less freedom, they will be supervised, and it will be more effective. Panel, in their world, if someone commits murder or drugs, or they said it will increase the hum, uh, homicidal rates due to the death penalty effect, the brutalizing effect, the violation of human rights will completely be violated, and the violator of violation of equal rights will be violated as two panel. Panel, we have clearly shown you how the death penalty is completely inefficient and outdated. And panel, we see no reason why, side proposition, we see no reason why we should not ban the death penalty. Panel, side proposition is proposing we ban the death penalty. We move on. We give human right, we give them the right to life, but taking a bit of that freedom away from them because of the, um, because of the criminal activities they have caused panel. Panel, 
we feel like we have taken the win for the debate. We have proven all side opposition cases wrong, panel. That case is solely right in the fact that, you know, it deters crime and all. Panel, we proved that completely wrong, panel. We brought up the costly argument. We brought up how it is ineffective ineffective and inefficient panel. We feel like side proposition has taken the win for this debate panel. Thank you. We request the third speaker of the opposition to begin. Yeah, give him a minute. Am I visible? Yes. Okay, I will have to start in three, two, one. Good afternoon, judicators and members in the house. I will first like to start with my rebels and then move to my clash points. My first rebel is um, the their first in their first argument, the first we told about inhuman. Um, I don't understand about this point. Sir, what do you think about the victim? Now you said. Uh, now you said that it is wrong to kill these prison, these killers, these prisoners. So, what is the inhuman of the victim? If they if they kill this, if they kill the victim, how is, that is going to be a big inhuman for the victim, not for the prisoner, because the prisoner is the one who killed him or her. Um, so, um, in that. That means their first point in their first argument does not stand, and I rebutted that correctly. And then in their second argument, they explain about uh, that it does not deter crime. Um, uh, sir, you might have known that in the USA, there was a big killing amount. There was lots of deaths, murder rate. And most of you that... Are... Deny, most of that was... Uh, most of that was gone because of the death penalty. It has been a it has been a big effect uh, on these killers, which it scares uh, which scares these killers, and uh, which which makes this society know that we are safe. Um, if we do not if we do not do if we take away death penalty, how do we know that the society is safe? Uh, these people they after a few years they come out of jail later on. They won't stop anything. As the second speaker also said about rehabilitation, that will never happen. They are still the killers, still they have it in their mind. It doesn't change. If they kill, it they kill. So um, this, if we have this death penalty, it deters crime and it brings about it has to save you. The government, the society feels you safe. Among. Denied. I will tell you when I say so. Um, and you said about this is very costly. As my first speaker also said, um, you are, uh, as first speaker said, this prison, it's hard for the taxpayers. They must pay for uh, the food, for the amount of years, clothes, sanitary, everything. How are you going to pay this? The government didn't bring up any answer or solution for this, um, which shows that the they are, the, their point of costly does not stand. I rebutted it correctly. Now let me move to my next rebuttal, which was said by the second speaker. He said about uh, that you should move into other future, uh, into other future ways rather than death penalty. Why, sir, are you stopping this? This death penalty has been a major effect on these killers. It can help to stop uh, it can help to uh, stop these killers and it scares them uh, which um, you know if another killer turns on like it feels like to kill another person feels like uh, doing a crime it actually stops them it knows and it feels like something that i should not do this so if you all are uh, if you all putting them to prison and put a rehabilitation that does not happen they still come out um, they come out and they do stuff which they want, L like the example which was brought by my uh, first speaker about the Mahara uh, prison. So this shows, so this shows that the penalty is more effective than rehabilitation, and um, your argument does not stand. Your point does not stand. Um, so uh, you said that uh, people can escape death penalty but not prison. Sir, 
what is the meaning of this there are huge criminals they are very dangerous um if they do not have this death penalty they can still go on um they can still go on and uh, kill they can go for robberies um they they can do crimes which still uh, which affects the society and it makes that the other killers also can do this so it, um it brings up it makes up gangs of this and then big robberies around the entire country only this death penalty can stop this um um so i have rebutted your point correctly and uh, let me move to my next rebuttal the third speaker um, told about um, that no the third the, the third speaker couldn't answer a poi which was said by us uh, our first speaker asked a poi about uh, the population sir we meant was a population inside the prison it increases because there is no death penalty the the uh, it increases the amount of um, peep, uh, pr prisoners killers inside the prison which is really hard for the taxpayers um and the third speaker could not answer that so i rebutted his uh, so um uh, i approve this point um and then let me move to my uh, clash points now uh my first clash point is human rights we know that uh he we have a right to live that is correct we we ha also have a need to live peacefully it's type of a right we have to live we have to live peacefully and safe where we know that we can stay if these killers are roaming around they can go and kill you other are. people um accepted yeah uh, you said that all these killers are roaming around and all and that uh, it is you mentioned human rights are you are you contradicting your argument and are you saying that it is the only way to get rid of criminals is by killing them through the death penalty are you saying that is the only way sir listen we say that the penalty it affects the other killers so we are, uh, later on we also don't need to do for them it reduces the kill rate so don't you get it sir um, so we we know that we have a right to live but where is the right for the victim for the victim the murderer can kill uh, the other person and we are still giving chance for the murderer to live this is really wrong sir only this death penalty is the solution um so i have uh, now prove my clash point let me move to my next clash point justice um i have uh, broken it into three parts of uh, from the perspective of the victim and family from the perspective of other prisoners and for taxpayers um so uh, for in my first part we know that if some, for example if in your family if someone of your all is uh, been murdered by one of uh, by a murderer we feel that they should feel the same and this is bad for the family also um these victims no sorry the murderer they do it for something like uh, to get money to robberies or just holding a grudge which is really wrong uh um, this so strongly affects the family also um it does not bring justice among them it's like um uh, it's a per uh, when your family member died that person should die too because he killed your family like, um, like in uh, latin which is said i for an i uh like that so it actually helps it brings justice among we request the opposition to present their summary am i audible and visible yes we can hear you okay i'll be starting in 3 2 1 go good 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 evening honorable adjudicators and members of the house first of all i want to start by saying we are present here in, in amidst of a government that agrees on the fact that it is better to put people into prison and pay them for their prison facilities and let let them live till old age uh, 
and continue to pay for them but using the taxpayers money that's that is the stance of the government of this uh, regarding this motion therefore we see that the government has not considered most of the economical burden that is surrounded by a lifetime imprisonment therefore we see that the government has failed with that let us move on to our arguments we brought three main arguments our first argument being the role of and the duty of the state our second argument being effectiveness and a third argument being the true meaning of justice now for our first argument we analyzed it under three main levels of analysis we brought out uh, the fact we brought out what the sovereignty of a state is we showed you how uh, uh, by removing stripping the state of this ability that we are going to strip the, uh, the state of the ability uh, and its sovereignty because we are uh, and we showed you what sort of crimes we are considering as this uh, capital crime especially murder and uh, drug dealing which ha which have huge negative effects for society we mentioned these things and we emphasize on these facts with the which the government did not address they did not even consider the fact that the we are talking about murderers and drug dealers and the amount the effects that they have to society we explained about the uh, suicide rates we explained about uh, the violence then we talked about uh, how it affects certain ethnic groups such as uh, the death of martin luther king we brought examples as such and we explained these things to the government with the government completely did not address and they just left aside and then we brought a second level of analysis which we explained uh, why, why the state was given this power we explained why the state uh, why the people of the uh, of a government gave, uh, gave this power so that uh, the justice can be done that law can be uh, uh, protected and people will feel safe which the government did not address and therefore we have clearly won that argue, uh, won that cl uh, clash now moving on to our third level of analysis we talked about the human rights we brought the the statement from the human rights act and we clearly explained to the uh, the house that we as a, as a, uh, opposition are not violating any human rights and we talked about a judicial system which the op, uh, the, uh, the go government happened to come here and say it's expensive how are you going to enforce any sort of uh, punishment if there is no judicial system the judicial system is the system that uh, calculates and provides uh, the, the the statement if you are going to prison or not that is important either way even if it has human flaws or not it is the system that is the most suitable to give a prison sentence therefore we clearly showed that to the house now moving on to our second argument being the effectiveness we showed about how things such as uh, fear and all of these things have a major impact in punishments and how we need to implement such a punishment that is effective that to protect not just these individuals but all all the individuals in a specific country now moving on to a second level of uh, uh, analysis we showed you how the forensic technology such as dna uh, fingerprinting and all of these things have improved and therefore evidence searching is much more improved and it has turned into a vast uh, change it has changed uh, mainly and then we brought out the argument uh, of uh, the uh, the perspective uh, and we explained the third argument under the perspective of the victim First of all, and the family, we showed you how families and the victims are being, uh, uh, human rights are being violated and therefore we are proposing this system where justice is served and then uh, under our second uh, analysis we brought the, from the perspective of prisoners and understand that there are thieves, all sorts of prisoners, including major crimes such as murderers and drug dealers in amongst them and this is not a suitable situation for them and then we brought out the third level of analysis from the perspective of taxpayers which is expensive to maintain these prisoners and to give them close clothing and their sanitary factories that they are found by the we request the proposition to present their summary can i be seen and heard yes we can hear you can i be seen and heard Uh, starting in three, two, one. Good evening, uh, 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 panel. I will be the sum up speaker for the proposition. So, uh, panel, the opposition's the second speaker said that uh, that the people who kill thirty-four to forty people, uh, do you feel like they deserve the luxury of going into prison and prison life? So, firstly, panel, as my third speaker mentioned, a thousand five hundred lives that were in prison, panel, have been proved to be innocent. So, uh, therefore, committing this irreversible punishment panel we feel uh, uh, is not uh, appropriate and also pam uh, the pro pro opposition needs to understand that uh, living uh, staying in a prison isn't a luxurious life in fact well staying in the prison is far from luxurious that's why prisons are there that's why uh, people use prison that that's why this system currently exists because it is proven uh, 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 to be effectful 
well, living in a prison is far from luxurious. Uh, most prison cells, well, your your bathroom and the room is in one tiny area, as one tiny cubicle. You don't have uh, the most luxurious sleeping facilities, panel. Yes, you do have your basic human needs, but then everybody deserves basic human needs, panel. We feel like that's a violation of human rights if you do not provide people these human needs. Also, panel, they said that we go through a lot of evidence and testing, and my third speak effectively rebutted that point, panel, because the cost that will be taken to do that and all the effort that will be put into that is much higher and is not valuable. We are not saying not to do the panel, but it just contradicts the opposition's case and it also builds up on ours. And panel, uh, I don't understand what the proposition is saying in that context because are you saying that just because people evidence test that the evidence test is always perfect or just because you evidence evidence test that it's always going to be right because we feel that human error is something that has been happening from the beginning of time and that's something that's going to continue to happen. So you need to take human error into uh, account. The opposition also uh, said that uh, a drug dealer could control his vast supply through unknown methods. So, well, if they are unknown, I don't see how they would like how they prove that uh, such a method exists because, like the image, when it is unknown. So, if, if it is unknown, how do you prove that they exist? And panel, if if that we can prove that it exists, so if we know how it happens, then as a government, it, uh, it is our responsibility and it is within our ability to uh, to rectify that situation. Um, and panel, uh, they responded to a POI saying that. Uh, uh, prison and rehabilitation are different. I think the opposition has not clearly understood the POM. So for the benefit of the debate, panel, what we meant was both prisons and uh, rehabilitation centers aren't luxurious. We meant the we do understand the prison and rehabilitation centers are different. But what we are saying is that both of them aren't luxurious and both of them have their own methods and own ways of uh, improving people and their own, uh, yeah, their own benefits in improving people. Well, they also people who large and heavy crimes do not change. Uh, the proposition, uh, sorry, the opposition second speaker uh, simply stated that point, but did not give any substantive or proof to back it up. Uh, back it up. And they also said that uh, that uh, that there's a more uh, chance for people to escape from prison if they were in prison for a longer time and a less chance for them to uh, escape escaping the death penalty, and that we believe that there's no chance for them to escape. In fact, panel, we did say that there is a chance for them to escape. It's just that we value human life over that minor chance. So panel, uh, now uh, our, our first speaker brought up effective arguments on how the, on why the death penalty should be banned, how banning the death penalty will be uh, effective. Our second speaker went on to rebuttal all of the opposition's points and bring on an argument that further complemented and elaborated the first speaker's argument, but also uh, rebutted the Opposition, our third speaker then effectively went on to analyze all the clash points, uh, analyze all the clash points and rebuttal the uh, opposition's first, second and third speaker. And therefore, we believe, panel, that we take the win for this debate. Thank you. And we will. Good evening to you all. Well, uh, first of all, it's like, thank you so much for like participating for this event, especially under these severe circumstances. We are like for the passion and the commitment, uh, which was like shown by the both teams. And uh, from the 
the St. Thomas' uh, point of view, uh, so like the, the, the key purpose behind uh, them to be participating for this event, we are to like get a little bit of warm up and get yourself prepared by understanding little uh, the the, lap, uh, the laps and hiccups and uh, to turn your strengths into the better strengths in, 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 in times to come for the finals within two days' time. So here, like we are not going to give any judgment. It's just a matter of like helping both teams to understand uh, the little flaws what they had, and uh, Saint, Saint Saint Peter's is to like improve them uh, for the for the for the for the for the development of their debating and uh, uh, especially for for Saint Thomas's for like y'all to uh, use those little uh, advices for your finals, right? So I started from uh, Saint Peter's itself. Well, uh, the, the by and large, technically, uh, the, the roles being play, uh, the, the, the played by three debaters were okay. And I saw like the couple of debaters, they were extremely young. Uh, something very nice to see. And they have time to uh, just improve themselves. But the, the, the only lacking what I saw, the number one, it, it, it was like very... Uh, Compared to some of some some of the topics what we have seen in the the in the in the competition, this was more or less a very uh, a, a simple topic which like uh, we have been exposed since the time of donkeys. So um, uh, so well that the technicality what a team can add into the topic uh, is quite low. But under uh, under such events, the way that uh, the three debaters handle it. That's 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 quite all right, uh, but the only the major mistake what I saw as they like the building the foundation for the debate, uh, they would have taken the social and economical uh, the standards of the country or the locality wherever that uh, wherever they wants to uh, the ban or implement the death penalty that would take the, the the major cause for instance now, so if you try to analyze with set of examples. Uh, about the countries who's currently having the death penalty and the countries who have banned death penalty and the countries who had been practicing death, death penalty in their, uh, the, the formative, formative years. But we can see uh, the need for a death penalty. It shows the, uh, the, the primitiveness or the, the advancement of a society, right? Uh, for instance, the, the the countries at the very at the in, in 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 developed world, you find the people have already achieved the sense of self discipline. People have already achieved the, uh, the 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 kind of a capacity to understand the values of democracy, understand the values of political correctness. So, like pushing them with the extreme power of fear uh, that the arbitrary law, which is like not a necessity in 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 such localities. And the countries where we find the people are with like the very primitive set of values uh, that can be grounded by many different socio-economical factors, right? Still, they are struggling to understand the real scope and the values of democracy and the, 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 the being handled by a very uh, decent level of uh, governance, right? So certain governments under such circumstances, they have kind of like... Um, infiltrated the fear uh, just to use some sort of a power over to uh, get the people uh, to follow the law and order right so that is the uh, the only major uh, the reason how we can justify uh, death penalty in my point of view uh, saying that okay having a prison it's kind of a like expensive thing to have so we can get rid of a few of them if we implement death penalty it can uh, it 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 might not be that that, that justifiable, right? Uh, except for that, yes, uh, some of those uh, some of the lads of Saint Peter's they were like really young, so y'all have time, y'all can improve yourself and uh, achieve that the uh, the, 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 the te technical requirements of like how you emphasize a point, how you uh, really get a rebuttal and make then and 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 and, uh, and infusing a sense of confidence up to the opposition team that as you break a point in a in a very systematic manner those little things uh, can be uh, constructively developing in, in times to come and from saint thomas's point of view 
uh, well, I'm just giving all these advices uh, with the only uh, the, the perception this can be really handy for you all in your finals. So what I can see, uh, well, in the finals, uh, as much as your, uh, your 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 context and the content, uh, it's equally important as the the uh, the manner and the technical. Uh, the delivery what you all be having since it's going to be a very uh, tough game. So in such case, if the judges are watching you all and uh, in a in a in a live arena, uh, things to be um, I would say like uh, the things to be convinced, which is like quite easier compared to like the the way how we access you all with a digital screen. So your body language, uh, your composure. Uh, your uh, your the things like your your voice modulation uh, that can act a very serious uh, effect in, in 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 judges mind especially i saw like couple of debaters including the last debater uh, he was like going for uh, maybe back of his mind he wanted to come out with like a lot of rebuttals in the the the, the brief time being given but that had Taken out the uh, the very uh, I would say that the uh, uh, the the attraction of the speech and at the same time uh, the, the the severity of uh, the convincing power what y'all uh, would have used in in a in a in a, in a better manner. I mean, like it's they, he, he was not out of the pitch or the out of the context in a in a in a bigger manner. That would have been perfectly okay if the uh, if that was being done in a in a preliminary ride or even maybe in the second round but it's like since you are reaching the finals those uh, subtleties can uh, can act a uh, very decisive role uh, with the end results uh, other than that bringing down um, uh, the facts and figures they were done in a better way but again i think like they, they they might have not done a great deal of preparation which is like very fair from their point of view since they have to get themselves prepared for the finals, they would have taken it in a uh, in the, with a with a with a light mindset. I can understand that. So what I can tell you, like as you progress to the finals, uh, we 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 definitely can expect uh, more preparation from you all and bring more and more evidence, facts and figures into your balance scorecard, uh, which will definitely give you a, a additional mileage. By and far, it was a uh, good debate and uh, St. Peter's, thank you so much and wish all the very best for all your uh, future endeavours and uh, St. Thomas, wish you the very best for the finals. If you all have any questions, just you can shoot now. Hello, sir. Thank you for your feedback. Very highly appreciated. You're welcome, sir. You're welcome. Okay, then. We're going to wrap up. Uh, and uh, thank you for the organizing com committee. Have a nice evening. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Bye.